Hello my friends, welcome to Jittery Videoville, I mean Rollin' Rambles. But yes, it's going to be a little bit shaky, and I can't do that much about it, because the light is very low, the lens is very heavy. So, hopefully you're just listening and not actually watching, so you don't have to see my smudgy face. I'm going to talk today about wages, specifically the minimum wage, but uh, not quite in the way you think. See, minimum wage is really tangential to what I need to cover, which is the living wage. There is no such thing as a living wage. The concept of a living wage is fake. It does not exist. And the notion that you are owed a living wage because you work full time somewhere is also completely bogus. What you are owed for working somewhere is what your labor is actually worth. In other words, when you negotiate your pay while you're in the hiring process, whatever you negotiate out and you're okay with, that's what you deserve. That's it. It's, it's as simple as that. There's no magic to it. It's not some kind of super like amazing complex formula your labor's worth what other people will pay for it, and if you think people aren't paying you enough for it, you either need to look around for someone that will, or accept the fact that maybe you are not worth to the market in your area what you seem to think you are. And it's true. There are a lot of people who overvalue their own work. Like, what, what do you really do for the work that you do? Like, what, what are you doing for the money? So let's talk about the classic, traditional, sort of mocked and derided, but at the same time, uh, very much a, a cornerstone and stepping stone of the modern economy for teenagers and other no or low skilled uh, people trying to get their foot onto the first step of that ladder, that economic ladder. McDonald's. Let's talk about working at McDonald's. Now, some time ago, before all of the nasty inflation since COVID, there was a time when McDonald's workers were, uh, in California specifically, uh, any of those West Coast cities really, <clears throat> they were pushing the fight for 15. It was this fight for $15 an hour as the minimum wage. The idea being, we don't make enough money at McDonald's to live off of, so we need to make at least $15 an hour because that's how much we need to survive. But corporations don't owe you survival. And in fact, if you really think about it, what does surviving really mean? What does this living concept mean? It means different things to different people. For some people, a living wage might just be, hey man, I wanna be able to pay my rent and my food and gas and cell phone and internet and all you know all my bills uh, and still have you know a hundred bucks or whatever left over to watch a movie or two at the end of the month or or to uh, buy some extra stuff to other people a living wage is I should be making enough money to be financially secure which is way more than just the minimum of having food and housing and clothing and all that and it depends very heavily on who you are and what your family is like and so on and so forth. The living wage for a family of four is very much higher than a living wage for one single person living in an apartment with two other people. See, the notion of a living wage makes a lot of assumptions sh about what constitutes living. And <clears throat> usually the way that this, this kind of poorly defined, vague, you know, mercurial concept works is it's defined based on whoever's saying it. Oh, you know, whatever. Oh, oh, I can't do this. Or, or I, <clears throat> I had a big uh, medical emergency come up and now I'm $2,000 in debt. So obviously I'm not making enough money. That, that's it. As, I'm not making enough money because I have debt. A living wage changes depending on who's living and depending on who depends on those people. It is not the job of the employer to give whoever's working there enough money to give them a comfortable life based on their situation. 
there is no standard. It, it's a bogus standard. It's, it's a fake standard. And at no point will the living wage concept ever actually work. Because it can't. It inherently is not really defined. So the problem with minimum wage, obviously, is that it sets a skill floor, a, va a value, a labor value floor under which you do not get to work. A lot of people view the minimum wage as, well, good, anybody who has a job, they get paid at least this much money, and end of story. Like, you know, oh, minimum wage go up, money go up. But as I've covered in other videos, a lot of people have this weird, simplified, childish notion that economies are basically little machines with knobs that, like, just like one big knob that you, oh, you spin the knob, you turn the money knob up, oh, and uh, now <clears throat> more, uh, more money come out on paycheck. And that's just the end of it. Everybody has more money, everybody's happy, and that's the end of it. That's not how it works. While economics is not a zero-sum game, like if you get something, it doesn't necessarily mean someone else is lacking. Because people's labor has value and uh, people can choose to labor or not labor, therefore people create value all over the place uh, or don't, depending on their own decisions. But ultimately, it is a zero-sum game when you have a company that has roles that it needs fulfilled and it defines those roles and it has a certain amount of money that comes in. There is not some sort of magical knob twisting that you can pull that is somehow going to make the company able to pay a higher paycheck to everyone on staff. Oh, but everything else will be fine. Nothing else will change. Because if, if the company has hundred thousand dollars let's just say it has a hundred thousand dollars to pay its 12 workers or whatever um, I don't know for for that month I'm just making up random numbers it, if it has a hundred thousand dollars to pay its employees for the month um, that's the you know that's the like the budgeted amount that they can carve out of their gross out you know after taxes and all that stuff um, expenses you name it if, if they can carve out a hundred grand um, to pay all of the employees total and they can split it up, you know, they've got a pool of fixed money to, to, to go to pull from, and that's it. You, they can't suddenly have 120 grand um, unless inflation happens. Now, the problem with inflation is that when you have $100 and, you know, inflation racks up whatever, 5% a month for several months until it compounds, because remember, at, at, at the first month, if it was like 5%, and this is just random numbers as well, um, if the first month is 5% inflation, then um, you go from 100 to $105. Now $105 is worth, um, is, is what you need to have the buying power of 100. And then that 105 goes up by 5%. Um, this is assuming you had inflation for two months straight at 5% each month. Um, now you've got not 110, but it's 110 plus 5% of $5, um, which I can't do that right. It's like 25 cents, but it's not 110, it's 110 and 25 cents. And it, as you can see, the inflation compounds. So every month of inflation, you're building on the previous inflation. So let's say the last figure I saw was 40%. So $140 today is required to be able to purchase, um, in general, on average, the stuff that three years ago you only needed $100 to buy. Okay. I bet the Popo picks up that white Mustang. Let's see if my prophecy comes true. Because they love hanging out at that bridge up there. So when a company has a fixed pool of money from which they can derive your income, your, your paycheck, um, if they want to pay you more money, there are a few different ways it can be done. So we have the same pool of money. One way to do it is make more money. Now, a lot of times you can make more money uh, simply by inflation causing everything to go up, but then that means that once the dust settles after the inflationary behaviors 
have taken their full course, um, everybody just is, it's just more money. It's just a higher amount of money for the same buying power. So the numbers go up, but you haven't actually gained anything. So now, and if you have 10 grand in savings, now it's worth less because that 10 grand now buys less stuff. So it's actually, inflation is actually theft. If you have money just sitting, the inflation will nuke it. So anyway, forget the inflation. Um, the inflation's one way. Another way is just to make more money in general. So if the business does something to where they can pull in more money, if they can raise their prices, um, this is actually one of the easiest ways for businesses to make more money is to just boost the prices to the end consumer. And that means that the end consumer pays more money. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's 2024 uh, as of me recording this. And people are not very happy, especially on the West Coast of the USA, where, um, where buying a meal at McDonald's that was like 10 bucks before is now 15 or whatever. Um, people are not too happy about it. And the numbers might actually be low. I think it's actually gone up way more than that. It's like doubled, um, in large part because of the minimum wage. And that's the thing is um, they keep cranking the fast food worker minimum wage up in California, and that directly translates to higher prices and less people on staff, which means the ones that are there have worse working conditions, um, and they're not getting paid more. Uh, they're just cutting staff. And that's the other way, that, that's another way that you can get more money um, in that pool to pay um, higher wages is to cut the wages and or hours of other people. So fire some people, um, lower the paychecks of some people, which is difficult to do because they get pissed off, or what they usually end up doing, cut the hours of some people. Um, a lot of people end up just, oh, well, you, you used to work... 35 hours a week, well, we're going to cut you down to 32 hours a week, so we'll save three hours, um, and we'll shift that three hours worth of money over here to help pay for the higher, um, the higher income that we're forced to pay our workers that aren't necessarily worth the higher income, but that we're being forced to by the government. And we'll cut their hours, too, to offset it as well, because the pool has not changed size. So, And we can't cut your wages without you getting angry and telling your friends and everybody just sort of revolting. So we'll just cut everyone's hours so that the, in, in total they make less money. Because the way that a paycheck works is if you work 40 hours a week at $10 an hour, you gross $400. If you work 30 hours a week at $10 an hour, you gross $300. I have picked bad numbers to work with. Um, but if you work, um, if you get $13.33 an hour and work 30 hours a week, you get how much? Uh, I think that that's $400. So if you're forced to pay $13.33 an hour instead of 10, just as an example here, um, you cut the workers hours by one quarter now they work 30 instead of 40 hours they get the same money for less hours but that means that while well, well initially that sounds amazing like wow i have to work less but i get the same money holy crap i get 10 more hours to do whatever i want in practice that's not how it works at all. 